Heiser. I pull out some of the bits from the box I looked through last week. And I'm going to see what I can make. So there was this one that was sort of started already. I'm not going to work on this one because I'm not sure what I want to do with it. But there was another one that looks almost identical, or at least the base of it. So here we got a blue here and and there's some linen and some other linen, some other bits of blue and some pink and they're the same one here. So instead I want to get started on this one. I pulled out another couple of bits from the box. I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to keep them on here. So these bits of lace and a bit of fabric. I'm not sure if maybe this bit here is a bit too much. So let's try and move it and see. If I take it away, maybe it's a little bit boring. So maybe if I put it in the corner like the bit I've got in the other corner, that might work. But I don't want to line it up with the other pink bit that creates a weird sort of line. So if we overlap it a little bit like that, maybe if I pull it up, no, that's better. So I'll just pin that down and we'll take it from there. I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do next. It's always a little bit when I start something like this, like a slope stitching piece. I'm not always always sure where it's going to go. But I also pulled out these hexagons from the box and I think I might be able to use some of this. But I think I'm going to have to take them apart. I don't want to use them together. I think. I'm not sure which one of these will work best. Or maybe I'll need two of them or oh, three I even. Mean. It's always a surprise how things turn out. Even if I do have sort of an idea to start with. But I guess that's part of the fun that you don't know. You just sort of throw stuff together and see what happens. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. And if it doesn't work, you can just take it off again. It's only fabric and thread after all. Let's see. This one definitely not because that's too boring. Right, let's take them all off and try them one at a time. I quite like how this one is sort of kind of similar to this one here. So that could be an option to use that. Let's put it here for now. This one? No. Maybe here? Uh, maybe. Let's put that in a maybe pile. I 
don't think the purple works. Maybe this blue one? I do have quite a bit of blue, but I think... No. This one might be a nice contrast. I don't know. Let's put it in a maybe pile. This one, definitely not. I don't know. I quite like the pops of yellow of the pins against the pink. So I don't know. And also there's a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little bit of yellow in in this fabric here. So maybe that could work if I add some yellow over here. Right, so let's get this one back. Maybe that one? No. I think we'll put this one here in some way. And uh, this one. Yes, I think I like this. I want to cut this off. Although, because I was thinking that I might add some writing like I have done here. And the best place for that would be here, I think. So now I'm not sure what to do. Because even with just a few words like here, it does take up quite a lot of space. But I suppose I could just stitch over the hexagon as well as the other fabrics. It's not like there are rules that say you can't. This is what I use when I add cro uh, cross stitch uh, either writing or just cross stitch in general although I rarely add cross stitch so I would put that on here and this is stuff called waste canvas I don't know if you've ever come across it So you, obviously you cut a bit to the size that you want, put it wherever you want it, and then you stitch whatever it is you want to stitch, and then once you're done, this can be removed. Let's just take a little bit. So you can just tear the, the strands apart. It's a little bit awkward here because that's the edge where it's a bit tied or woven. But you just pull it apart and you do it in one direction and, and then a little bit in the other direction and then at the end it's all gone. I really like this and it's really good for I like working black work on plain fabric like this and this is really great for that right well back to my slow stitching piece here I 
think what I'm going to do now is just stitch these bits down and then see what happens. I'm not sure how I'm going to stitch it. I think I might just use some running stitch. A running stitch is always a good place to start. Should have put up some more pins, but never mind. I can start with this one. Actually, I think for the hexagons, I won't use running stitch, I'll just use some sort of wonky straight stitches on the edge just to keep it in place, and then I can always add more if I want. I prefer not to have a proper plan when I'm doing slow stitching. I want the stitching to make up itself as it were. And sometimes things happen like you have a pin that goes really nicely with some pink lace and that inspires you to add some pink stitching or buttons or maybe I'll have a look for some beads although ideally I would like to use some of the bits from that box I haven't got any beads in there, I don't think. But I do have these buttons. Don't think there's anything yellow in there. I suppose I could use these little, what is that, brass maybe? That could work. Especially since there's some gold print on this fabric here. Maybe. I think I've got a couple of these buttons. Oh, that's a different one, but it's the same colour. And this is from the box. So it would be very good to use that. Alright, so I've sewn on this hexagon and I've got some yellow threads. So I'm going to sew this one on in the same way. I think this is going to be a nice combination with the pink and the blue and the yellow. Which is actually a combination I use quite a lot, although I tend to use a more sort of turquoisey blue than a proper blue. But I quite like this fabric here. And it's got pink in it. I like pink, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> I 
Speaking of noticing things, you may be able to hear Blake snoring in his bed next to me. Or maybe not. He's sound asleep. You may also be able to hear some planes going off past overhead. We're in the flight path to London City Airport. Although we are quite a long way away. But we still get them flying over. Something stuck. So, what's next? I think I'll start by stitching these two down. And just so I can get rid of the pins. If you're doing slow stitching, do you try and match your thread properly to whatever you're stitching? I quite like just picking whatever is to hand and not be too precious or particular about it. I think if you try and, I don't know, control it too much, then it sort of becomes boring. And these stitches are really wonky. I don't know if you can see how wonky they are. <laughs> I quite like that. So now I've sewn these two bits of lace on there. So now what I'm going to do next, I think I might do some running stitch across here just to stitch these two bits down properly. This one is just basted on and as you can see that one is pinned down. A little tip if you have stranded cotton that is a little bit twisted like this and especially if it's two strands it can be a little bit difficult to work with and it starts to tie itself into knots but if you take the two strands apart and you can see how sort of curled it is it sort of bunches up as I'm separating them. But if you take them apart, that will help the threads or the strands of the thread relax a bit, which will make the stitching more even. And then you just put them back together and maybe just run them between your fingers and the natural oil in the skin will also help it to relax a bit.
Maybe I should have got out a surgical needle and my surgical thimble. That would have made very short work of of doing these straight stitches. Are you a rocker or a stepper when you do a running stitch? So the rocker will be doing this. Picking up multiple stitches at a time. But a stepper, you would do one stitch at a time, stepping the fabric. If I'm working in a hoop, then it's easiest to step the fabric. But if I'm working like this without a hoop, then I find it easiest to rock the fabric. It might not get quite as even as it could be if you were using the stepping method, but it's a lot quicker. And since this is slow stitching, although I guess that's a bit of an oxymoron to do something fast when it's slow stitching. Anyway, it's a nice way to do the running stitch quicker and it doesn't matter that maybe it's not as even. In fact, I quite like that it's not even. It makes it feel more organic and you can see that it's made by a human as opposed to a machine. I hope AI never figured out how to do embroidery. Let's, let's keep it as a human activity. And I don't mind if the stitches aren't the same length and they're not on the same line and it's just generally quite wonky. I quite like that. Sometimes I leave the basting stitches because it adds another another texture to the work. I think for these ones I'm going to take them out. Sometimes I like to just finish the thread off on the front. Maybe it looks messy. But again, I think it adds to the texture. Do you like my pin cushion? A friend of mine made it for me. It's actually one that you can put around your wrist. But I really don't like putting any pins or needles in the little face. Just, just seems wrong somehow. So I just put it in her scarf and her hair.
Hmm. I actually wanted this to overlap the blue one, but it has shifted a little bit. I can't be bothered to do that anything about that. So it is what it is. Might do some stitching across it so that it looks like I did it on purpose. Right, so now I need to decide before I start adding adding anything else if I want to add some writing here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I have room for it. Let's play with these buttons instead. These gold, brass, whatever they are, but I quite like them. How about this little bit of embroidery? I could put that on here, maybe. Oh, I don't know if you can see this. This was in a mini hoop that has discolored the fabric. So I think I would need to cut around that. I think it might be fun to put that on there. Yeah, I think I like this. I think that will work. Maybe if it overlaps the hexagon a little bit. I think it feels too static if they just sit right next to each other. Just a tiny bit of overlapping. And because this color is quite close to this color which is one of my favorites and this is one of my this is really one of my favorite fabrics in my stash it's a liberty quilting cotton from i don't know 2013 maybe so that could maybe sit over here or maybe not Maybe this needs to be the focal point, so that this is the only thing in that colour. I don't know. I feel like this bit needs something as well. Maybe this little flower? I don't know. Might be a bit boring what about a giant button no I think I will add a word not one of these words but I am going to count If I have a six letter word, let's have a look. No, it's not quite as long as that. So I could maybe stitch it here, although 
thought that oh cross the lace I'm not sure how well that would work but I suppose I could cut off some of the lace because I don't want to move it over I want to keep the middle section free because I have a vague idea that I'm going to use these things that I make from the things in the box to make a textile book so I want to keep this free so that I can sew the pages together I'm gonna cut the lace It's a shame I already stitched it down here, but there's nothing to do about it. So let's see how wide it needs to be. I always cut it larger than I need it to be so that I have room to tuck it down around the area where I want to stitch I think I've given myself enough room. So the needle just came off the thread and I'm having trouble threading it and I did before as well. I think this has a little burr inside the eye so I think that needle has to be discarded. So let's try with another one. What do you do with your old needles and pins? I keep mine in a jar because I don't think it would be good to just throw them in the bin. Someone might stab themselves on it. I think it's in February 
every year. In Japan, they have a day where they thank their needles and pins, which I quite like. They do a lot of work for us, so why not thank them? I can't remember what that day is called. I think it's nice to think of the tools and materials as collaborators, not just things. I think it's it's a nice way to look at things. Can you guess? Which word I'm um, stitching? Any ideas? I'm almost at the end of my word now. Can you guess what it is? Last stitch. There we go. Is that the word you thought it was? So as I was stitching this last letter, I suddenly realized the A is longer than the other letters. There was only supposed to be two stitches here. Never mind. It's fine. Maybe this will give me an idea for another piece, making the letters different sizes. There are no mistakes, only happy accidents. Right, so let's get rid of the waste canvas. So first I cut off the, the basting thread. Really, I could have done that sooner. As soon as I had done a little bit of stitching and so that the waste canvas wouldn't move, but Usually I just leave it until the end. So the first thing I do is cut off as much excess as I can. And of course trying not to cut into the letters or the background. So once I've cut off as many big bits as I feel is safe, I will come in with the small scissors and cut through some of the strands of the fabric. It just makes it easier to remove because all the strands are holding each other in place so if there are some gaps where they have been cut then they will release much easier of course this you have to do very carefully or you risk cutting into something you don't want to cut 
So now it's just a matter of pulling at the strands. Usually I would use a pair of uh, slanted tweezers because that makes it easier to grip the strands of the fabric. It can be a little bit awkward to do it with your fingers. place here I like to see I like to come in and cut because it's an almost enclosed shape so the stitching also helps to keep the the strands of the weight waist canvas together so it just helps to remove it if there's a little bit gap in the middle right so I think you get the idea of, of how this works I'm going to leave it now because it's so much easier with the tweezers. I wish I knew where they were. So there's still quite a lot of stitching to do on this I think. Not sure entirely what else I'm going to add apart from this thing here so I'm going to keep working on this over the next couple of days I guess and then I'll show you once it's finished for me a couple of days maybe for you like a second so see you then. So it's quite a lot later. Not even a couple of days. It's almost a week since I started working on this. And I've only just finished it. I guess it's ironic that I've had very little time to work on my slow stitching this week. So I was, I was, as I was getting ready to film this, I realized I think I want a little bit more yellow here. So I'm just going to quickly add that. So I'm using a fairly long needle for this. I think it's a milliner needle. And because it's long, I can do this rocking motion to pick up several stitches at a time and they are really wonky which is something I really like all different lengths and there's a big gap right there but it's fine I don't mind one bit. So I can add a few more. I think maybe I'll go back in the other direction as well. Fill in the space. Try not to think too much about where I put the stitching when I do this kind of slow stitching. I think the stitches themselves are the point, for me at least, but it doesn't matter what they look like and they only need to have an approximate place 
in the finished thing. That's those stitches there. I think that helped. And it helps to tie this bit together with the yellow here and yellow over here and down at the bottom here. Because there's quite a lot of different things going on here, I decided to keep the stitching really simple. So it's just running stitch and some wonky cross stitches. And because these two sections with the pink lace are quite bright, I used the stitching. So here's a light pink and up here it's a yellow to sort of just calm them down a little bit and tie them in with the other things that are going on. So. The light pink here is in the fabrics and the yellow is repeated several places. So I'm really happy with how this turn out, uh, turned out. I wasn't sure, to be quite honest, how I was going to do this, but I guess that's the case with most things I do with slow stitching. But that's fine. I think that's just part of the process. Just add something and that will give the idea to add something else, which then inspires a third thing. And then you just keep building it up in layers. What I really like about this is exactly that it has a lot of layers. So there's the background layer and here is some fairly thick linen and a slightly lighter linen here. I don't know if you can see but that's actually a separate layer. Although it's almost the same color as the background fabric. And then we have some quilting cotton on top. And it just gives a really nice texture with the stitching. And you can see how it creates little sort of valleys in the fabric. And I really like that. That's one of my favorite things about slow stitching because you can do a lot with just a simple running stitch. And with the different layers and different lace and things, you can create these lovely textures. And for me, a big part of why I enjoy slow stitching like this is that it is very tactile, both to work on it and a finished article. So now this is finished, but if you remember in my box of slow stitching goodies, there was a similar one that I had started and added some other bits to. And I'm going to work on this one as well at some point. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I just noticed there's some cross stitches down here in that same turquoise color. So that might be an idea to explore. So we're here, I got the crosses upright as it were. And here they add an angle. So it might be fun to have these two pieces that are similar, but the stitching will be different. And obviously all the other elements are different. But because I'm planning on using the stuff in the slow stitching goodie box, 
to make a textile book. I regret putting this leaf here because that will be right in the middle. But I suppose I could unpick the stitching and move the leaf. Or maybe I'll just leave it and that will just be that. Maybe I'll add some more leaves. Who knows? But at least this one is finished. And I can have a rummage through the box, find some more bits and start another piece. So I'll share that once I get started on another one. And hopefully then I will also have made some kind of progress on this one. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. And please like and subscribe and all that jazz if you feel like it. And say hello in the comments. Be nice to meet you, if not in person, but in the comments. Have a great day and happy stitching. <laughs>